Hi again, I'm going to show you the place of the BIOS in the motherboard. So as you can see here, this is the laptop motherboard. Okay. Here in the motherboard, we have always the CPU. This is the GMC head. Here we have the ICH or the third bridge. Okay. So always in the motherboard, in the laptop motherboard, you should look for the super IO the is io so let's check here we don't have the super io so let's check the other side as you can see here we have the is io this is the super io as you can see so usually the bios chip is near to the is io to the super input output ic okay so let's check here we don't have the bios so the BIOS should be in the other side of this of this ice. So let's check. So as you can see, this is the BIOS as you can see here. Okay. Let's check its reference. As you can see here, this is the BIOS reference. We have 25Q16BVSEG. 16, as you can see here, 16 means the capacity or the size of this BIOS is 60 megabit, means 2 megabytes, okay? Because 8 bit equal 1, 1 byte, okay? So always or usually you will find the BIOS near to the SIO super input IO or in the other side of this IC. Sometimes you can find the BIOS near to the ICH or to the search bridge. And sometimes we'll find that the ICH, the BIOS and the Super IO is near to each other. So let's check another motherboard. I will show you the BIOS in many motherboards in order to go deeper into understanding the working principle of the BIOS. Here, as you can see, we have another motherboard. So this is the processor, as you can see here. So the processor with the GMCH and also the graphic card. Here we have just in this motherboard two chip, the big chip, this and this. So this is the, the ICH or the third bridge that is responsible for all the connectors and parts in the motherboard. Okay? Here, this part is the, the, the CPU. And here, here we have the GMCH and the graphic card. So, the graphic card and the GMCH is integrated with the CPU. Okay? Because this is a new motherboard. So, let's check. Here we have the ICH, as you can see, and here we have the Super IO, as you can see. So, we, I told you before that the BIOS should be always or usually near to the Super IO or to the ICH. So, as you can see, this is the BIOS. You should distinguish between the BIOS and the MOSFET. Always the BIOS has a big chip than the MOSFET. Okay, so here we have the MOSFET as you can see and here we have the BIOS. The BIOS is bigger than the MOSFET and sometimes in some motherboards you will find the BIOS with a mark, a color here or a paint. Okay, so let's check the reference of this BIOS as you can see here. We have 25Q32 as you can see. So 25Q32 as you can see, B, V, S, O, N, G. So, 32 means what? 32 megabit means 4 megabyte. Okay, 4 megabyte. Always you will find that the reference or the, the letter that is designed for the BIOS is U, exactly like an IC, because the BIOS is an IC. Okay, so let's check another motherboard. So we will check also this motherboard. So as you can see here, here we have the processor, as you can see. 
here we have the GMCH with the graphic card. So the graphic card integrated with the GMCH. Here we have the ICH or the third bridge. And here we have the ISIO or the super IO. Okay, so the super IO is the IC that is responsible for the power in the whole motherboard. Okay, so let's look for the BIOS. So as you can see, here we have the ICH, here we have the super IO, and here we have the BIOS as you can see. So this is a MOSFET or a simple IC, and this is the BIOS. Always the BIOS is greater or is bigger than MOSFETs and other ICs with eight pins. Okay, so as and as you can see here, we have a color here. Okay, as you can see, this color means the BIOS. Okay, so here we have the three components are next to each other. So let's check another motherboard. So as you can see here, also in this motherboard, we have the processor here, we have the GMCH, as you can see here. So let's see the other side. So in the other side, as you can see, we have the ICH or the surge bridge, and here we have the super IO, as you can see. So let's look for the BIOS. The BIOS should be next to the search bridge or next to the SIO. So let's check. So as you can see, here we have the super input output, here we have the BIOS. Do you see the difference between BIOS and ICs or MOSFETs? Do you see the difference? Always the BIOS is bigger. So this is the BIOS. This BIOS, as you can see, it seems that this BIOS is already remove it from the motherboard and drop program it as you can see here this is a new solder here we have a flux so this bios is already reprogrammed okay so this is the bios with eight pins as you can see eight pin always the pin number one as you can see you will find the pin number one always is marked with a hole here or as you can see this mark means this is the pin number one two three four five six seven and eight always the pin number four of the bios is connected to the ground and the pin number eight is connected to the vcc that's equal to 3.3 volts we will see all this in the schematics and we will check the bios using the multimeter Okay, so we will go step by step until you be a pro in the BIOS and how to reprogram it and its schematic, etc. Okay, so in this motherboard, as you can see, we have an old BIOS, as you can see. In the new motherboards, okay, we find just BIOSes with eight pins. Okay, so also you can reprogram this BIOS using a program. The BIOS faults. So, the first fault is the computer won't start. So, even if you press the power button, but the computer won't start. This failure is one among the BIOS failure. Of course, after checking the power for the computer, for example, if you have a laptop, you should check the adapter. If you find that the adapter is good, so the BIOS can be the first cause of this failure. The second failure is the black screen. When the laptop is on, but the screen still black, no data in the screen means the probable cause of the failure is the basic input output system the bios you should reprogram it so of course for the black screen there is many reasons for example problem in the rams in the random access memory the problem can be also in the graphic card but if you check the random access memory and 
all tags in the computer seems to be good, then the problem is in the BIOS. You should flash the BIOS using a new program. The third fault is the BIOS errors. When you get a lot of errors while you start your computer, means you have a failed BIOS. The fourth fault of the BIOS is the computer won't start and the power lead or the caps locks lead blank. When you have the power lead blank or the caps lock lead blank means you have a probably a failed BIOS. Okay? The next fault is the deed motherboard. If you have a deed motherboard, when you press the power switch or the power button, but you didn't get any response, no light, no indication in the computer, means the probable cause of failure is the BIOS. You should reprogram your BIOS. Of course, you should first check your adapter. If you have a laptop, you should always check your adapter, especially if you don't insta install the battery. Okay? When you have a good adapter or a good battery and the computer wants to start up, means the problem is in the BIOS. You should reprogram it. Of course, I will show you in the next lectures how to program the BIOS step by step. Okay? The next failure of the BIOS is no data in the computer screen. This failure is the same failure as the black screen, but sometimes you can get a black screen or a white screen, okay, or even a blue screen, etc. When you get this kind of screens, with no data in it, the BIOS probably is the cause of this failure. So you should program the BIOS. And of course, in the next lectures, I will show you how to reprogram the BIOS and how to back up the software in the BIOS first. Because always you should make a backup of your BIOS before reprogramming it. Because you can need this backup again. Okay, so the next failure of the BIOS is beeps. When you hear a lot of beeps, maybe two, three, four, or even five, when you start the computer, maybe the problem can be in the BIOS. But first, you should check the RAM, the random access memory slot. So if you find that the random access memory slot is installed correctly, Okay, and you should check also the hard disk drive and also the CMOS battery, all connectors in the motherboard. And you should check that the power is good in the whole motherboard. And if you check all this component, the RAM, the HDD, hard disk drive, the CMOS battery, all connectors, the power is good in the motherboard. And the failure still persists, I mean always the beeps still persist when you start up your computer means you have the problem in your BIOS. You should flash your BIOS. The next failure is when you check all voltages in the motherboard, you find that all voltages are present. You find the 90 volt, you find the 3 volt and 5 volt. Computer is on, all voltages are present. The 5 volt for the USB connector, the 3 volt are present in the pin number 8 of the BIOS. You find all voltages, but the computer still not on the screen, still black screen or white screen. This is a good sign that you have the problem in the BIOS. You should remove your BIOS and flash it or reprogram it using the programming and then the computer will work fine. So this is the most important and the most BIOS failure that, that you will get during repairing. If you get one of this failure that we discussed, you should reprogram the BIOS. But the first thing to do is to back up the BIOS. 